It is their job. It's everybody's job. You go to a representative and a senator or a township supervisor, and I guarantee you, if you give them a copy of the Constitution, you ask them if they read it, more than 90% of the time you're going to hear no. How in the world can they do their job if they haven't read the document that controls it? Why do we let them get away with it? Go to your township supervisor's meetings. Do that. Experience that. You know, you can take your county back or your township back really easy. How many supervisors are in your township? Three or five? So you gotta have two seats. Two beats one every time. Oh, there's five, well you need three seats. Washington, you gotta have what? A majority of what, 435? Really hard to do that. But you can take that county, and by the way, the county commissioners, there's three county commissioners, right? Two beats one every time. Is this a Republican or Democratic county? Republican. So you got two Republican commissioners and you got one Democrat. And I know that Democratic commissioner is frustrated, really frustrated, because two beats one every time. So if you want to control the county and get the sheriff a raise and get more deputies and do all sorts of stuff, get control of the county commissioners and make them do their job. <laughs> and if they won't, replace them. Now, if they don't do the job, and by the way, the sheriff has the authority to fix that problem, but I suspect that he won't. Unless it gets out of hand, and then I encourage the sheriff to do that. We, uh, what, does the declaration say we are, uh, tend to suffer suffering while sufferable, suffering is sufferable, or something to that effect? <laughs> At any rate, the answer to your question is we have to do it. We do have to do it. Um, on the website, County Sheriff Brigades of Pennsylvania, the address is sheriffbrigadesofpen.com. Um, on the home page, you can click on the, the sheriff or down at the bottom, it's about a posse. That links you to a paper that I wrote about posses and then links you to Sheriff Joe Pia's uh, posses in Maricopa County, Arizona. They've been around since the 40s. He's got over 3,600 full-time posse people, volunteers, all right? And it's really interesting. The funniest one is they have a, a retirement home called Sun City. Actually, they've divided. They're so busy and big. They've got two posses out there. Anyway, they have these posses. These guys can dress up in uniforms. They've got a badge. And if they, then they do walks around and they see a problem, they call the sheriff. And the sheriff comes out and takes care of the problem. All right? So there's a lot of things that we as people can do to get order back into our lives. We've got to start with our own selves. I would really encourage you not to fear going to jail. Hopefully, the sheriff will be a constitutional sheriff and won't let that happen. But unfortunately, the other reality is there's a lot of cops out there who don't have a clue. They don't have a clue. They got a gun. I told one who had me in his back seat once, he had, a, he had a tattoo gargoyle on his head, right? And I said, you know what's really scary? And of course he said, what? I said, they get people like you guns. <laughs> Bottom line is, if you're bold and you're knowledgeable, they might put you in jail for a little time, but I'm walking proof that you can get out. <laughs> All right? Any more questions? Yes. I just want to, um, uh, not to veer off the sheriff's issue real quick, but um, concerning uh, this um, House, uh, House Bill 357, um, we know that there is a lot of problems with uh, over there in Harrisburg um, with even the chair believing that Supremacy clause of the federal government supersedes anything they think you know uh, they might be able to do about even bringing this bill up to the floor. I just wondered, um, you know, if we're all going to be calling certain people to get this get this thing up for a vote. Um, okay. First, first of all, people in the judiciary are usually attorneys. That ought to give you the answer to the problem. All right. There are some good attorneys, but they're really far and few between, and, and they really don't study the law. If you get on the website and read my paper, No Such Thing as Case Law, I explain how that got changed. 
and prove that the judges can't make law. They really can't, can they? Not lawfully. They do a lot. They think they do. And a court decision is automatically a law. And the federal government, when they decide the Supreme Court, that means we all have to jump to and do it, right? No. The, the Supreme Court of the United States have jurisdiction, lawful jurisdiction, over things in the federal jurisdictions. No other. Get on the website, read a paper. There's two of them. So-called 14th Amendment is unconstitutional, and I do a tutorial as to why. And that's how cases go from the states to the, to the federal courts, through the 14th Amendment. 14th Amendment has never been part of the Constitution. Oh, that would really cause a lot of heartache. But the law and the evidence is overwhelming, written by attorneys and judges, not me. All right? History proves it. So that's on the website. You can read that. Um, we handed out um, a paper two weeks ago, I guess it was. No, four weeks, a month ago. Uh, they're coming for our guns and ammunition. I wrote that with respect to the next one. And then the next one I read, I bet it say it isn't so, Joe, when they proposed all these uh, executive orders and his four, uh, Obama's four remedies, right? No authority whatsoever. Um, and if you want to start learning it, I just finished one, which uh, won't, won't be handed out. There's also another one on there that you should read. It's our, our uh, right to bear arms is a God-given right, where I take on Justice Scalia and his absurdity. And uh, with respect, you can't have anything but things you can carry. You can't have a cannon. You can't have, he said, well, when we have to deal with these uh, shoulder-mounted rockets, we'll have to deal with that sometime in the future. I thought he was an original intent guy. I really did. I lost a lot of respect. So I take them on. Why did they put the provision of the right to bear arms in the Constitution? Anybody tell me? Yes. They were fighting a war, just got them finished fighting a war, in the defense of any case, um, we're fighting it, against government tyranny. It has nothing to do with hunting and target shooting. And you can have any gun, any weapon that the other side has. How stupid would it be to go to war with somebody, this tyrant, and oh, by the way, he's got a, a, you know, a tank, which is fast, and jet planes, and you can't have that? It's like going to a gunfight with a knife. It's stupid, all right? You have the right to have the same weapon that the government has, but they don't act responsibly a lot of times, so you have to be responsible. That's what liberty is all about. You have the right to have any and every gun or weapon that the government has because the reason those provisions are in the state constitution and the federal constitution is to protect you and your family and the community from tyranny by government. Because the framers knew, had just experienced it, knew that that's what happened throughout history. Governments get tyrannical. Go back to the Roman time. How many people died because they were disarmed? Go to Germany. What did they do there? Every time tyrants take over, they disarm people. Every time they get ready to disarm, they register everybody. Don't let it happen. All right? Any other questions? And I know we're running out of time. One more question. Yes. Uh, one question is, why is he trying to allocate and get permission to use drones? Well, that's the newest toy, isn't it? Mm. All right? Because we can't have one of them. Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> I just told you. Now, maybe you don't want to believe me. That's okay. But think about the logic. If the, bad, if the government can have something, you can have it. I wrote in this paper, you can have a tank in your driveway, loaded, ready to go, always being responsible for its security and proper use. All right? Don't let somebody go, particularly attorneys and judges, say, we can't do that. I didn't answer the question on the supremacy clause, so if I could do that. All right? The supremacy clause. <laughs> what do they usually use? They use the welfare clause, the commerce clause, and the supremacy clause. The supremacy clause says that those things in the federal constitution 
that are the same things that are in the state constitution, that particular um, authority is superior at the federal level. If they don't have it at the federal level, or it's made up by a bunch of attorneys and judges, they don't have any supremacy. And if the law is unconstitutional or misapplied, it's not a law. And they say, oh, you're going to break the law, right? If it's not a law, you can't break it. <laughs> All right? So the point being is who determines, and I say you and I do, and if we choose to make, do that, then I think we'll be a lot better off. But the supremacy clause does not say that everything the government does, the federal government does, is superior to the states. Why in the world do you think they put the 10th, the 9th and 10th Amendments in the Bill of Rights? The 9th says if we haven't talked about it, it's, it's uh, the people's, right? And the 10th says the same thing. If it's not delegated to the federal government, it's retained by the, the states and the people. All right? So the 10th Amendment was put in there to forestall what the people in the state saw the federal government was going to do, and that was to seize all power. There was no check. Now, if you want a good 10th Amendment case, Sheriff Mack won that in 1997. All right? These, these, this is a summary of that case. And uh, it's applicable within the states, in your school boards, in your county commissioners, in the county level, in the state level. Read that case. We don't have time to go into it tonight. Have it back in a little time. But the supremacy clause is always a, is used as a rouge, just like the attorneys say, well, that's a federal issue. We can't do anything about it. I hear that constantly in Harrisburg. And, of course, I turn around and say, pardon me, have you read the constitutions? Do you really understand what you're talking about, Mr. Attorney? You're wrong. And here's why. They have no authority to do something. The state has the authority, or you have the authority, or both. Right? So how in the world? Another one is treaties. That's another one. They're going to follow this gun ban treaty from the UN, right? Treaties are not superior to the Constitution. They are not. They are like statutes. You can think this through. How do you amend the Constitution, the federal Constitution? Either the legislatures of the states propose it or the Congress proposes two-thirds of both houses. That takes a while. And then it gets sent out to the states, and either by conventions or the legislatures of the states, three-fourths of the states have to ratify it. That takes a long term. How do you do a treaty? The president proposes it. The Senate, by two-thirds, approve it. Do you think the framers would have written that in the Constitution and say you can amend the Constitution by that little shortcut? Why did they write the long, long method? Because they wanted to make it difficult to amend the Constitution. And you have to follow it exactly. And by the way, it hasn't been followed exactly a lot. Like the 14th Amendment and the 16th and the 17th. They're not part of the Constitution. And the state Constitution's worse. So, point being is, we need to understand and stand up, and we can do this. Treaties are not superior. The Supremacy Clause only applies, only applies, when the federal government has jurisdiction and it's in conflict with the state. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Okay, hopefully we'll have a little bit of a uh, little bit more time at the end for more questions. So if you think of something, um, we'll bring uh, Mr. Ryle and, and as well as the sheriff and uh, Tom up here so that they can answer questions. Uh, we are grateful today to have our sheriff in Bucks County, Duke Donnelly, with us. We did invite uh, sheriffs from surrounding counties. The um, Montgomery County Sheriff Eileen Bear um, was interested, but unfortunately had a conflict. The uh, the sheriff in Berks County as well. Oh, by the way, um, Sheriff Bear, how many of you are Montgomery County folks here? Okay, you might be interested to know that she has attended uh, some of those meetings of the 
Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association and has uh, actually personally spoken to Sheriff Mack. So I'm sure she'd appreciate a call and encouragement to actually join CS, whatever that is, Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers, CSPOA. Um, I don't think she's actually taking that step of joining it and making it that public, but um, the Sheriff of Berks County uh, would have liked to have come, but he had a conflict. Uh, we also contacted Lehigh County Sheriff Rossi. They actually never got back to us. So do try to get back to your sheriff. We really appreciate Sheriff Donnelly taking the time uh, to come and speak with us. He's been the sheriff here for nine and a half years. He was previously to that the uh, chief of police in Lower Southampton and, a, and working in law enforcement in the city. So uh, I've asked Sheriff Donnelly to take uh, maybe 10 minutes or so to talk about to you about the, the practical role of the sheriff, how he sees it from, from a gentleman who's been doing it for some time now. So Sheriff Donnelly. Uh, Jamie was in to see me last week, and we talked a little bit uh, about the role of the sheriff. And one of the things I, uh, I, I want to give out tonight, if I can, I didn't bring. I don't think I brought enough copy for everybody. Is one of the papers we came out with is. Jamie, would, Jamie asked me how I felt about the Second Amendment. And obviously, I told her I took, this, I took an oath of office. I took when I went into the service. I took when I joined the Philadelphia Police Department. I took when I joined the uh, Lower South Hands of Police Department. And I took it, uh, uh, every, well, since I joined the, the Sheriff's Office, I took it three times now. Once when I was appointed, and twice since I've been elected. But uh, this is just, a, you know, I just wanted to get it out to Jamie to let her know. And it says, to whom it may concern, as the elected sheriff of Bucks County, Pennsylvania, I recognize the primary responsibility of law enforcement is to protect the citizens and preserve individual rights and freedoms. In accordance with the Second Amendment of the Constitution of the United States, I believe the law abiding citizens have the right to own, possess, and keep and bear arms. I will not support any effort to infringe upon the constitutional liberties of responsible cities of responsible citizens of Bucks County. So I just wanted to get that out there before you know before anybody else. Uh, I want to talk about the sheriff. Does anybody know what the sheriff does? All right. The, the sheriff has a, I mean, obviously, it was, a, it was eye opening for me when coming out of uh, police work into the sheriff's office. Uh, he told, Bill talked about it that uh, we, he told that we don't have any statute powers. In other words, we don't have powers to make arrests except with warrants. We, we can arrest somebody for breach of the peace, but that's about it. Anything we do, we take the court. We can't be the charging, charging officers. We, it has to be a police, a police officer. And people talk about, you know, we're up and down uh, around the county. Uh, we've been trying. Uh, the, the, the Sheriff's Association has been trying in Harrisburg to get our elected officials, right, to change it, to give us the, to give us the same power. It's only a small, you know, all they have to do is just add, and the sheriff. And with the sentence, you know, that would be the adding, would give us the power to make arrests, but to give us the power to do law enforcement. Obviously, the sheriff's office in Bucks County, the only thing we do, we work for the courts. That's the power that we do have. I know Bill, did, Bill disagrees with that, and I'll, I'll talk to him later about that to try to get some information on it. But right now, the only thing is we're officers of the courts. We don't do the jails, even though I'm chairman of the uh, prison oversight board, and obviously we don't do patrol work, we don't do arrests. What do we do? Well, we serve civil papers. Anybody being sued, you have one of our deputies coming up to. Uh, we serve arrest warrants for criminal court, for people that don't show up for court, or people that don't pay their fines when they have to. Uh, we also levy on properties, and we do sheriff sales. That's not something that we really enjoy doing, but unfortunately, it's part of the law, and we have to do it. What else do we do? Well, uh, the sheriff's office—I don't know if you've seen it—but we do we do do fingerprinting for kids. 
at different uh, different affairs around the uh, around the county. So far, since we've been doing about six years now, we did 27,000 fingerprints. This year, so far, in this year, we have eight requests to do it again this year, and obviously that'll be more as the weather becomes warmer. I mean, the, the, we get notified about the, the upcoming events. Uh, we're on the process now of getting ourselves accredited by the state. What does that mean, accreditation? I mean, obviously, hope it, it, it instills pride and uh, pride in the, the office itself. But what it really does, it tells everybody that the sheriff's office is, is acting within the state guidelines. But the best thing for us in the county it lowers our liability insurance because, you know, the hard part was it, right? The, I mean, obviously, the, the whole thing we have to go to the uh, Bill talked about the county commissioners for budget. We can't, you know, we don't have a taxing thing, so we have to go. And anything we do to save money or bring money into the county is well worth it. We want to do something, the first thing they ask you is it in your budget? It's not in your budget, forget about it. Then you have to, you know, you re request it next year. But they're always course conscious. Uh, does anybody have any questions? I do. There's a story from uh, that you've heard in Oregon and Washington about the smart meters, where sheriffs are arresting homeowners who do not let them put the smart meter on their house. If you say you can't make arrests, then how come those sheriffs are arresting? Certain states, certain states, they have arrest powers. Unfortunately, Pennsylvania is not one of them. Uh, Washington, Oregon, they might be. I know uh, Arizona has it, Utah has it, Texas has it. They can make arrests. In Pennsylvania, under under the statute, we have no we have the statute to the Supreme, state Supreme Court that we have no statutory uh, uh, authority to make arrests. Yes. How can you serve an arrest warrant if you can't make an arrest? We serve. We're serving a paper of the court. We have an, We have an arrest warrant. We can make the arrest because we have papers to serve. If we can serve because we are an arm of the court. Can you serve to the person who's named in the warrant? Yes. Why don't you just mail them then? You can't arrest them. We arrest them. I mean, no, 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 don't get me wrong. We arrest them. We go ahead, we come knocking on your door. We have, I have an arrest warrant for you because you didn't show up for court. But you're coming with us, all right? Are your, so, people, are your people Act 420 certified? Excuse me? Act 420? No, we're Act 2. It's a different, uh, a different, uh, Different law on this state. We go to we uh, Act uh, 120 is we uh, for 17 weeks. Act two is 19 weeks. Are you considered a peace officer? Then? Law enforcement officer. Law enforcement. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sheriff, what would happen if you ran your office as a constitutional sheriff? You just did that on your own. You were going to run it as you took your oath. What would happen? Well, first, first of all, I'd have to uh, have to look at the. I think like the problem with it, right? You know, would I be arrested? Probably yes. Do I want to go to jail? Probably not. <laughs> would would your whole... deputies arrest you? Excuse me. Would your deputies arrest you? I don't know about my deputies, but there are law enforcement. Uh, there are law enforcement officers into the court. The, the county detectives, I think, would. Do you? Do you? Have authority over police chiefs in Bucks County? No. So if they come to my door and say they want my gun, you can't do anything about it. Good question. In reality, we're, we're they're independent. They're, they're working for the townships. We work for the county. So no, I don't have no authority over the police, uh, police departments in the county. I thought the sheriffs had more authority in the county than anybody had, as far as local police chiefs. Like and I that's said, an important question we all want an answer to because we're worried about the government coming and taking our guns when they pass some of these laws. That's right. I'll tell you right now, there was, it, it, there, as long as I'm sheriff, there will not be a deputy sheriff in Bucks County taking your guns. I didn't say a deputy sheriff. I said a police chief or a policeman in Quakertown, as an example. Well, the whole thing, I don't have authority over them. Why not? Who does? Who does? The township does. No, I thought the Constitution said you did. We don't. 
You say, I, I, mean, I, I told Bill I want to talk to him about it. You know, he, he, he told me he, he talked to him about it. But right now, I don't have it. Talk about it. Somebody better understand what the law is in this state. You don't understand? You have the authority to do that? I don't have the authority. Where does it say you don't have the authority? It's under the statute. We have the uh, state Supreme Court that says we don't have the authority to do this. We're not, we're not statute in the, in the laws. Where does it say it in the Constitution of the state? I might not say it in the Constitution of the United States. I mean in the state, in the state. But unfortunately, we do follow laws. We are a nation of laws. I mean, obviously, obviously, if we disagree on them, we can get the laws changed. We get the legislature changed. If, if we change, change the people were elected. The law's not constitutional. You can't enforce it. Excuse me. If the law is unconstitutional, you can't. Well, if the law is unconstitutional, if the law is unconstitutional, we won't enforce it. I mean, obviously, I took that. I took the oath of office. And the Constitution is, is, is up all. We can't, uh, you know, you're not going to go against it. Yes, sir. Mr. Curious, how many concealed carry permits have been issued in Bucks County, and how many troublemakers have you had? Who may have abused them? Well, last year we did 9,200. Uh, that was 2,200 more than the year before. This year, I think. We'll probably go up at about eleven thousand by the end of the year. Uh, the first couple weeks of this uh, of this year, of, well, the first twelve days, we did thirteen hundred uh, licenses to carry. What would cause a concealed carry license or permit to be revoked? If you got arrested, uh, breach of the peace, where it, uh, if somebody was a habitual, I'm just going to say, somebody was a habitual you drinker. And you're constantly, you have your gun on you, and you're constantly getting, I'm not saying you're pulling the gun or anything like that, but just have the gun, you know, you start troubles in bars and stuff like that, but the police are getting involved. Otherwise, it's a, well, otherwise you don't. Normally, it would be, you'd have to commit a crime to pull, uh, to get it revoked. Okay, if I brandish a pistol, my pistol, do I become automatically the aggressor? It all depends what you put, uh, banish your pistol for. Where the state police get it? The state police are independent law enforcement agency. Uh, the state police, unfortunately, not you know, not that I want to say anything about the state police, but when the sheriff's office goes to Harrisburg and tries to get that statute changed, we we have law enforcement powers. It's the state, state police and the chiefs of the police that fight us. Okay, folks, we're, we're going to uh, stop the questions right there if we can because I do want to give Tom a few minutes and then hopefully we'll have a little, a, a little bit uh, more time for further questions. Thank you, Sheriff Donnelly. If you want a copy of uh, the Sheriff's <coughs> letter, it's up here at the front and uh, we can make extra copies if you'd like. Um, just quickly before Tom comes, if you um, are a voting member of CCG, in other words, you've signed our mission statement and have been here at least uh, two meetings and would like to nominate somebody, please raise your hand so you can get one of these if you came in late. Anybody need one of these? And if you have one filled out, if you could um, just wave it around and Kathy, if you want to come and pick those up. Also, um, again, if you need a volunteer form, anybody need a volunteer form? that would like to take a look at what opportunities we have to help us out? Anybody? Okay. Um, Bill, your constitution class, do you want those handed out? Do you want those? Uh, uh, yeah, just, want yeah, okay, I'll give you a second to do that in a minute. All right, uh, Tom Lingenfelder um, has been active and again, he's one of the veterans that I very much appreciate for the last several decades in uh, working for a constitutional government. He has run for a, a variety of different offices and he is running for sheriff. And Tom, if you could take five minutes to tell us why. Okay. I appreciate that. Thanks. I have four pages here, but I only have five minutes. So I'm going to get an extra minute. Yeah. We can't hear you. First of all, I want to say I agree with everything Bill said. I've known Bill for 25 years. I 
think we used to argue a little bit 25 years ago, but not much since then. In fact, the last time I think he was at a meeting at Bankwood, I was doing the talking, he was doing the listening. And I was talking about the Declaration of Independence. Well, I just got on the ballot as of a couple hours ago. Had a hard time getting all the signatures, but I waited until the last minute because I wasn't going to do this. But I heard some rumors, et cetera, and several people asked me to run. But I made it. I'm on the ballot for now. I have a week yet before they can challenge me. They probably will. They always do. So I've been in court many times over election matters, probably 50 times or more, because, as you well know, the election process is controlled. The party picks the candidates, conducts the elections, and counts the votes. That doesn't sound like America to me, but that's what I've been fighting for 20 years. So one of the questions that most people have asked when I've asked them to sign my petition is, what qualifies you to be sheriff? Frankly, I don't know if anybody could do the job the way Bill describes it. It's a hard job. It's a tough job. You're going to have to fight your own people to do the right thing. But I was a counterintelligence agent a long time ago. I was recruited by the person who became the leader of all intelligence in the military. He recruited me, and my first assignment was working with him. He was tough. Excuse me. It was a very emotional time for what we had to do. I did the, as I said, the counterintelligence agent, the top secret clearance. We had to pick people and help people, and help the United States, pick only trustworthy individuals to run our government, serve in our military. Do you know that some of the people that would not get security clearances are now in the White House? Do you know that they don't even require them anymore? I mean, so security clearances? A lot of the people, they aren't, they aren't required. When I was a secret special agent, everybody needed one. I remember doing an investigation of one of the top federal judges in, Pen in Pennsylvania. He needed a security clearance. Of course, it wasn't very difficult. He had always behaved himself. But things have changed dramatically. And I find it very, very annoying to see what, that's why I've been running for the last 20 years for various offices. People say, there's another criticism, oh, you run for every office. You know why I do? Because nobody else does. How many times was I the only competition in the whole primary? That might happen this time even. I think that's disgusting. They pick the candidates, they conduct the elections, and they count the votes. There's one thing that's really important to me. I've been handing these booklets out for about 10 years, 15 years. And like Bill, when he started doing what he's doing, I was called a kook. Here comes the kook handing out the constitutions. Now everybody wants them. There's a change. People are talking and talking talking. That's good. It's a good start. But who's doing it? Nobody. Very few people. Very few people would even help me get on the ballot because they're satisfied with whatever's going on. Well, I am not satisfied. I think we can do better. I think we have to start somewhere. And when I first understood that enlightenment, I got involved in politics 20 years ago in Bucks County. And when I figured out what was going on in the county politics, all of a sudden, it all fit in with all my historical background, my Army intelligence training. The county operates in a very criminal way. They violate laws all the time because the people that are running the government are doing that for one reason. They want the power over you and the power over the money. But as soon as I understood how it works, I understood Harrisburg and the federal government. It all works the same way. It's all about one thing. Evil people 
using stupid people to control the ignorant people. The ignorant people are dangerous because they might learn. Stupid people, they do what they're told. Very good example, Hitler was the evil person, stormtroopers were stupid, and the people were ignorant. And what do you do with ignorant people when they learn something? You get rid of them, and you take away their guns. One of the first things that ever happens. So that's basically why I'm running for sheriff. Because I began to realize, mostly through Bill, the last 25 years, he's been preaching this for years and years. It starts here. The sheriff is supposed to be looking out for your rights. Somebody has, has to. If he doesn't, who will? I've been in court many times. Nobody ever looks out for my rights. I have to fight for my own rights. One little side thing here. Bill was talking about God and the Constitution. No Declaration of Independence mentions God three times. You wouldn't know that from what you hear in the news. One thing I always thought was important, I think Bill and I talked about this a couple weeks ago. Um, in, the, in the Declaration it says you have unalienable rights. Thomas Jefferson, he wrote in one of the drafts, inalienable rights. John Adams recognized it was a mistake. It should be unalienable. Unalienable rights are universal rights. They come from God, the Creator, or Mother Nature, whichever one satisfies you. They are there. The rights are there. You may be deprived of them sometimes, but they are there. Inalienable rights. Now you watch when you see people write about the unalienable rights, they'll insert inalienable rights sometimes. In fact, a lot of dictionaries will tell you they're in, they're, uh, can be used interchangeably. Not so. Unalienable rights from God. Inalienable are rights given to you by government. They can be taken away. Unalienable rights can never be taken away. You may be deprived of the use of them, but they are always present. That's what it's all about. That's what freedom's all about. It's very simple. And that's why I'm running for sheriff. That's why I run for every office I've run for. <coughs> I hope I don't have to do it again. I hope I can stay on the ballot this time, but I've been thrown off the ballot 11 times. People think, oh, you always run. I always try to run. 11 times I was thrown off the ballot. Not once was it legally justified because I was a pain in the butt. To whom? Not to you. So that's why I'm here. And if you want to support me, pick up one of the constitutions, has my phone number on it. And if you want to do something, instead of talking and talking and talking, I tell groups, okay, I'm sitting here for an hour and a half, and you've been talking and talking and talking. What are you going to do? Run for office, help somebody run for office, because we only have one problem in this country. We have the wrong people in office. What are you going to do about it? best way to get rid of them, vote them out. How are you going to vote them out? You never have anybody to vote for, do you? And you know why? Because you haven't supported anybody. Look at the primaries coming at May 21st, and you will see. I think the Democrats don't even have a person running for one of the offices yet. In fact, some of them wanted me to run for sheriff as a Democrat. I don't care if I run, which party I run under. It's just a vehicle for me. I'm an independent red, white, and blue patriot, no matter what party I'm in. So, and they don't like it for some reason. I wonder why. If somebody here can tell me, I'd be pleased. Well, thank you very much. Okay, we have time for just a couple of quick questions, and then we've got to adjourn. Glenn? I've got one question for this man. Yes, Tom. Tom, you're running for sheriff for this area, right? Correct. May I ask you to stand up and ask him that same question you asked the other gentleman, sir? Do you think he forgot it? Would you? If a local sheriff came to my door to 
get my gun. What would, you, I'm sorry. what would you do with Cheryl? I would, do, I would do exactly what Bill suggested we have to do because it's under the Constitution. I believe the sheriff should be standing there to protect you unless you're wrong. Yes, question. I have a question. So, I mean, that, that's my greatest concern. That's why I'm here tonight. But if he doesn't have, as the sheriff, in, as it stands now, does not have jurisdiction to make an arrest, and there's a local police or worship federal agent breaching my door to confiscate firearms I'm not willing to register or relinquish, what could that sheriff's department do, even with good intent right now? And go to court for you. Huh? I believe I would file a lawsuit immediately. Well, okay, but at, 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 that, at that time and point in motion, like we saw in New Orleans, I yeah, don't have time yeah. to file papers. Yeah. First of all, in all due respect to Sheriff Donnelly, the sheriff is the highest uh, peace officer in the county. If you want to believe the liars and not do your job and accept whatever they tell you and, then not, and to get a statute to tell you that you have authority within five uh, miles or uh, 500 feet of the courthouse, I fought 2585 last session to stop it because it was putting uh, the idea that the sheriff was in a pigeonhole and didn't have authority over the county. The county sheriff has jurisdiction over the entire county, and nobody but nobody can change that except the people. They've tried to do it, and that's why they keep creating these little fiefdoms in the townships, and the state police come in and think they're the top dog, and he's absolutely right. They're fighting like crazy to keep that power. They don't have it lawfully, and if the people just say no, and start standing up together and understand the law, the sheriff is there to interpose himself between you and any lawbreaker. And when somebody comes from the federal government or the state government or whatever to take your guns, I don't think the statement of the Constitution is unclear. The right of the citizen to bear arms in defense of themselves in the state shall not be questioned. Shall not be questioned. Every gun law is unconstitutional. So. Do we need to be talking to our legislators to get them to um, give the sheriffs back the they, they power never, or change they never lost those it. They never lost it. They can't lose it. I wrote that in the paper and give you the, the sources of people who understand what sheriff's duties are and their responsibility. The only way to diminish the sheriff's authority is by constitutional amendments. The courts. The legislature has no authority whatsoever to diminish them. They can increase them, but it cannot diminish them. Right, but they have made an effort to do so. Oh, so aggressively. So shouldn't we um, put pressure on our legislators to uh, do whatever they can at that level to to First of all, make it I would instruct the sheriffs clear. and everybody else, don't listen to attorneys who are working for the Sheriff's Association to try to get legislation that puts them in a box or a cubby hole. I'll fight it again because it's wrong, all right? You are, they already have the power. And if you acknowledge it, if you say, well, we have to have a statute, then you, you are now under it, all right? So if in fact you're free, be free. If you're in fact have a constitutional duty to do something, do it. And we the people have to help the sheriffs understand that. And if in fact they get in trouble, and they will, we have to stand with them and say, not in my county. You're not going to take away the authority of a sheriff in my county because you're taking it away from me. That sheriff only has authority because of you. All right? Okay, and if folks here want to actively be involved in that effort, they should uh, contact Bob Frank. Bob, can you stand up? Because he is the um, County Sheriff's Brigade of Pennsylvania, Bucks County. He's the Bucks County coordinator. Uh, Right. Well, and Andy? Here. It's actually cross-referenced through concerned gun owners in Bucks County, too. Uh, it's all, We're all doing the same it's thing. It's the focus is there's in each county, we would like to have a brigade of concerned citizens which learn and work with other groups 
but also to make sure that the sheriff is doing their job and help them if they need to. All right? It's not replacing, it's working with. And uh, Bob volunteered several years ago to head up the Bucks County Sheriff Brigade as the county coordinator. I don't know what you want to call yourself, a director or coordinator, it doesn't really matter to me. But we would like to have, uh, and Andy is, uh, we're going to be working together uh, with the gun owners as well, and hopefully he'll get involved in brigade, and so will the gun owners. We're all the same. It's like being a posse and a part of a militia. It's all the same. You're still citizens. So get involved. Okay. Uh, I also teach a Pennsylvania Constitution class. I only have 20 of them, so if you, uh, maybe I did 30. Uh, Just take one of your minutes. This Saturday, thank you for that. This Saturday in Lee Heighton, um, at the Salem um, Bible, French, Friendship Bible Church, um, the address is on the flyer, from 9 o'clock in the morning to 4 o'clock in the afternoon, an hour after lunch, it's 30 bucks for two days, that is two Saturdays, the 16th and the 23rd, okay? And I'll be teaching a lot of the things that I've learned through the years, referencing not only the state constitution, but the federal constitution, and try to empower you with knowledge so that you can answer these questions about the supremacy clause, or about whether the federal government, uh, you have to do what the federal government says. You don't. What's the 10th amendment about, if, if in fact you have to? This is total ignorance on the part of attorneys. So this class is, uh, it's intense, uh, but I think you'll walk away with a lot of knowledge. And I also do a lot of handouts. So you'll have some homework, all right? Yeah. It's like going to class, but it's only two times. Your children go five times a week. Well worth it, well worth it. I was to one of these classes uh, a while ago. Thank you very much. Okay, folks. Andy, yeah, real quick. And anybody is not signed, we have a petition. The charity works with Bucks County back here, so if you haven't signed yet, please do. Thank you. Right, yes. If anyone has signed that thing for the school protection, the school, the petition, just bring them up here. I appreciate it. Okay, make sure you drop out, drop off your petitions on the way out. Oh, okay, sure. I'd like for you to think about this. The definition of a license, the definition of a license is permission from a competent authority to do something without such permission would be illegal, a trespass, a tort, or not otherwise allow no words is unlawful. <coughs> if you have a God-given right protected by the Constitution, do you need permission from government to exercise that right? I don't believe the framers worried about getting a permit, or did they worry about having whether their pistol was on the outside of their coat or inside their coat. This thing about concealed is a way of getting you to register, get a license. My suggestion to sheriffs is instruct the people that there's no lawful requirement for a gun permit concealed. If you want one because the rest of the world is crazy, then that's fine. But the sheriff is violating his oath of office if he requires you to get a permit. I take issue with that. Okay, you can talk to him. Yeah, sure. Talk to him afterwards, please. Um, constitutions are available on the back table if you would like. And uh, one other thing, there is a Facebook group that this gentleman right here brought to my attention. It's facebook.com backslash groups backslash Second Amendment PA. So if you're a Facebook person or you have a young person in your family who is, um, that would be a great resource. And um, by the way, um, Mr. Lingenfelder mentioned uh, the dearth of people who are willing to run for office. I have um, been considering a run for office myself, and I just filed papers today to run for our school board in Penridge. So, um, thank you. Pray for me. One yeah. more thing to do. But, um, if you would like to, to support me in that, even if you're not in Penridge, do more for CCG, and then I can do less here, and I'll have more time for that. But um, thank you very much for coming. We look forward to seeing you all on the second Tuesday of April. And our treasurer is in the back there. Wave your hand around, Jerry. We just want you to know we don't collect money because they have rules against it here in an official way, but she does have deep pockets, and we do have to pay for this room. So thank you for helping us out. God bless.
great week. <coughs>